It took us 13 and a half years to land a rocket. We tried all sorts of things. We tried parachutes, um, and we finally got it right. We actually released a blooper reel, or Elon released a blooper reel about three weeks ago, um, showing how hard it was. It was really hard. Actually, that was the hardest thing, but that was the first step, really, for us to say, we're on our Mars. We're going to make this work. It's just so great. I love, the, I love those videos. We've got all this business, we've got these rockets, we've got the launch sites. We have uh, Launch Complex 39A, which we're flying from right now. Uh, that would primarily be used for Falcon Heavy and crew. Right now we're flying single six because last September we blew up our pad at Launch Complex 40. 40 will be back up and running in uh, for December launch, which will be very exciting. We'll have both pads going. We have our Vandenberg uh, pad, which we just launched the Arabian satellites from on Monday. Monday. Um, and then we're also building a first commercial launch site in South Texas, which would be very exciting. Perfect location for the BFR, the big Falcon rocket. <laughs> Upgraded version, actually this is a rocket, this is much smaller than the concept that we rolled out last year. And it relies on both the transport vehicle as well as kind of a propellant depot. Uh, to come and do a uh, fuel transfer. So it'll use fuel to get up, and then what we'll do is we'll fly up another tanker and refuel the ship, and then send it down its way to Mars. And Elon will want it to go that fast. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the concept, refuel in orbit. The tanker ship comes back, and the BFS, the big Falcon spaceship, goes on to Mars to its journey there. And then I'm going to end with... I'm going to be question. Do you think about all the things you have to go into Mars, Moon, satellite broadband? Can you do it all? Is there a reason why one would put up this much? So there's no question that we can do it all. It depends on how you want to face it for the money. Um, it will be, we can, and we can actually fund both developments depending on what time frame you're talking about. Um, I get the sense that Elon is quite impatient um, to get to Mars as fast as we possibly can. Um, so my guess is we'll have to probably get a little bit creative on the funding thing. But maybe yes. yes. actually, I mean, you gave a hint that perhaps there's maybe a chance to cover the second stage as well. So perhaps there isn't just an area of history for reviews. How far can we take the news to be a part? Sure. So our second stage was not, the first Falcon 9 and for Heavy is not designed to be recovered and reused. But what we do want to do is try to bring it back slowly. Right now, we always have to be orbited. It's part of the, um, the policy within the United States. You can't leave junk in space. Um, and so every second stage after we deploy the satellite, we do a little bit of the first phase and then we re-enter it. But it comes in hot and it primarily burns up. Uh, it's a controlled re-entry. Uh, so what we want to try to do is, on missions that have extra propellant, is try to bring that second stage back slow, slower, more slowly. Uh, just to take a look at the aerodynamics and how it behaves. And we want to cover it or reuse it um, because it wasn't designed to be reused. But it will give us good information in moving forward towards the big Falcon rocket and big Falcon spaceship. Please. On control. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. And then as far as the fairing goes, we have recovered fairing not completely intact, um, but fairings are really expensive. They're actually incredibly expensive, more than you think. Um, and so we are going to recover them. I believe, I think we'll probably get the fairing recovery right such that we're recovering them in the first half of next year. Recovering them in a shape where we can reduce them. Gotcha, gotcha. So Magdalena, that's a question. For sure, we're focused on the space transportation piece, um, but because we are going to take people there, there has to be something there for them, some place for them to live. Um, I don't think it's an accident that uh, Elon started the Boring Company, because I think probably tunnels is uh, is going to be one of the early ways of, of living on Mars. I, yeah, and, I mean, ultimately, ultimately, terraform, right, um, with an atmosphere that protects Other things that we were talking about that may that are going to be harder than building the, the BFR system, um, they will be composite tanks, so that will be a challenge. But I mean, we've been able to get through all our technical challenges. Raptor right now is firing on the engine stand in Texas. It's 
scaled version. We're building the, the larger version um, right now. But Raptor is going to be fun. Uh, it's a great engine. It's a lot of methane system, by the way. We pick lots of methane because we can basically produce methane from the Okay, so there are a number of questions. I'm not sure why we're asking, but. Um, well, but it seems like a lot of people are curious about the VFR and where it would be built, given you know, that it wouldn't go by land or that part of the building. Yeah, so we're looking at uh, building a facility uh, near the water, down in uh, Oregon, uh, Oregon Valley, and then we're looking at uh, building a facility near the water, down in Oregon Valley, and then we're looking at building a facility we, before, we thought we would build the AFR um, in the factory in Hawthorne, and then we actually priced how much the cost to move the stages from Hawthorne down to San Pedro Harbor. And it was going to be like two and a half million dollars per, per lot. Because you have to like take all the stuff down and, and that just, that's not what it's complicated. So, so we're going to build the factory on the lot. That's awesome. um. So I I wasn't sure we would make it uh, when I joined SpaceX, but what I was sure of is I did not want to be part of this industry if SpaceX didn't make it. Um, I was one of the most experienced people coming to SpaceX um, at the time. I was in the business for 15 years, and you know I was. It seemed like such a shame. Innovation was well, almost non-existent. Um, satellite and flying technology, computer technology that was 20 years old, 25 years old, just did not seem like a very exciting place to work. So I wasn't sure SpaceX was going to work, but I was hopeful. And I said, this will be my last job in this industry. And if it doesn't work, I'll sell real estate, I'll do the barista, I mean, I'll, I'll do anything other than work in the air So you were so disillusioned, disillusioned. burned out on yeah. one. Yeah. 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 So, um, but, you know, you put 15 to 25 of those people together with the experience and the drive to kind of change the industry. We started, it made me think about changing the world then, not about changing the industry. Like all, this, all this money, all this public money is getting spent um, in just stupid ways. And we need to show the government that there's another way of doing business and developing technology and doing really exciting things again. Happened to be in space. For me, it happened to be in space. Um, so, you know, there's been some incredible moments. They're always, yeah, it's like at four in the morning. Um, when we worked with the International Space Station, it was like three or four in the morning. Yeah. 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 I didn't think we were going to make it. It was like everybody's heart was pounding and we're all sweating because we were hanging by a thread. We, if we lost one more sensor, we were going to have to abort and, and, and leave the vicinity of the ISS. But we made it. We hung in there long enough for the astronaut to grab. The, uh, the birthday dragon by the tail. Dragon, yes, grab dragon by the tail. Um, so incredible moments. And those moments make all the chaos and emails all day long and travel just disappear. Like absolutely disappear. I was so joyful when we birthed and when we landed the rocket in December 2015. Uh, you know, that was an extraordinary mission for us, by the way. That was a brand new rocket. We had a failure the flight before, about six to five months before. So we were coming off of a failure with a brand new rocket. And not only was the mission successfully done all this uh, Orcom satellites to orbit, we, I mean, we got to orbit. That was like, you know, after a failure and a brand new rocket on your day. Um, and then the man who was insane, being a part of that, like, like Baker, you saw the video, right? He was jumping up and down, <laughs> crying. You know, they don't do that on Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs>